a prophet of the Jews, had seen the advent of a king. One like unto Moses and like David, who would bring a new life to his people with release from Satan's chain and the world would be renewed under this Messiah's reign. He would be born in Bethlehem, the prophet Micah said. And the people's expectations grew when the prophet's word was read, a king to rule with iron rod to drive the Romans out. The time of heaven's favor, their fortunes turned about. A virgin shall we conceive, the prophet had foretold. No such thing had was ever known in all the days of old. But Isaiah made the statement under inspiration's power, and the king would be conceived at heaven's stated hour. An angel comes to a Hebrew maid, the last of David's clan, and startles her with news of God's favor and his plan to have her as the mother of his one begotten son to raise the promised son of God, the pure and holy one. Mary hears the angel's words and wonders what they meant. The angel says, this is God's hour. His wonders will be seen. The Holy Spirit will come down and plant the holy seed to activate the plan of God to meet man's desperate need. So let it be, the virgin said, I'm glad and praised the Lord. He cares for me, his humble servant. I will fulfill his word. And so she kept within her heart the words the angels said to give her comfort, cheer and hope throughout the times ahead. When Joseph heard the shocking news, he was perplexed indeed. The marriage planned with Mary now perhaps should not proceed. But the angel comes to Joseph in the quietness of the night and assures the puzzled husband that all will be all right. His name shall be called Jesus. The instructions were emphatic. To save his people from their sins, like Joshua, full symbolic. He will be called Emmanuel, the proof that God is with us, and he will take the sins of men according to God's promise. The babe was born in Bethlehem, a town of old Judea. The census drew the people there at that time of the year. The inn is full, the keeper said. There's only the old shed. So the couple took the offer of a haystack for a bed. The pains began at midnight and continued until dawn. The first few beams of sunlight saw baby Jesus born. And the animals looked curiously at Judah's promised king as if in sort of worship of this new and holy thing. They wrapped him up in swaddling cloth. A manger was his bed. One of Mary's garments formed the pillow for his head and they thanked their God in heaven for the blessings of that hour that heaven's greatest treasure was upon the earth right now. Goodwill to all. Our God has given to all whom he has favored. The angels sang to shepherds as amongst their flocks they labored. Let's go to Bethlehem, said they, and find what we've been told. If this is truly saviour, king, true shepherd of the fold. They found the babe, as had been said, a bunch of hay for a royal bed. They tuned their praises to the infant's cry and returned to the hills beneath a bright blue sky. The star the angels formed as they lit the sky so bright was observed by wily scholars as they studied in the night. So they packed up sturdy camels and headed for the west and they found the child in Bethlehem at Herod's shrewd behest. Upon their knees they worshipped him as king of mighty worth and tokened it by bringing gifts the best from on the earth. <clears throat> they turned 
and went their wayward trek upon a different way, for men change road. <coughs> <clears throat> for men change roads when once they've seen the bright celestial ray. Wise indeed were those men of old, coming from afar with scents and gold, to seek out something of eternal worth, the plan of God for a sin-cursed earth. So what will you do with God's great gift? Just tell it as a story with a cultural shift. Tell it to the kids as a fairy story. Put it on the mental shelf as old and hoary. Turn it into cash and a lot of money. Make it entertainment, sad or funny. Make it a class distinction measure. Make it an excuse, excuse for a heap of pleasure. Or, accept the gift with all its love, in the spirit of grace from God above. Accept the forgiveness inherent in his name. Let him take your sins <clears throat> and remove your shame. Let him lead you on the road he knows so well. Let him guide you away from that trap called hell. So, if beasts in a stall can stare and observe him, if shepherds in a field can adore and praise him, if dignitaries of foreign lands can worship and revere him, then you and I are surely able to humbly come to Jesus' stable, to bow before the manger, to see a friend and not a stranger to kneel before that humble stall and give him all. It's 140 if you're using the hymnal. That is, give thy throne. <coughs> There'll be three verses used of this hymn. Verse 1, 4, and 5. Stand as we sing. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today that <clears throat> we have been privileged to live another year where we can celebrate just a little of the greatest gift that was given to the world, your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray that we will take him into our hearts. 
We pray that today we'll renew our acquaintance with him in a special way. We pray that we'll acknowledge him as our Lord and as our Saviour and as our Redeemer and the one who is coming back soon to take us to be with him, to be that personal friend for eternity. Dismiss us today with the assurance that our salvation rests in Jesus Christ, whom we honour today because of his birth, because of his death, because of his life, because of his saving love. We pray it please in Jesus' name.